My aunt actually told me about this, Poisoned, The Dirty Truth About Your Food. It's a new documentary, a new Netflix documentary. So of course I had to watch it. And of course I was pretty skeptical. Number one, I wasn't sure by the title what it was going to be about. Pesticides maybe and infotainment and pesticides. Ugh. Usually pretty hyperbolic, lots of fear mongering. Number two, it's a documentary. I don't like getting important information about health, nutrition, really anything from documentaries because they are movies first and foremost. They are entertainment first and foremost. And a nuanced view on a topic is not entertaining. The movie needs to be over the top and exciting to get people's attention. They want the viewer to walk away feeling something, right? Usually like scared or pissed off. They don't want you to just go, oh, I learned something. And Poisoned does not deviate from this. It is most certainly infotainment. It uses visuals and music and anecdotes to make you sad, scared, mad. That said, I liked it a lot more than I thought it would. Poisoned is not about pesticides. It's about pathogens, dangerous pathogens in our United States, Americans' food supply. So they start the film by talking about E. coli after the big jack-in-the-box outbreak back in the early 90s where four children died. People rallied together, basically, and ultimately the government responded. And today you cannot sell products contaminated with E. coli. But as the filmmakers stress, the same cannot be said for other pathogens they are not regulated in this way. Why is that? Salmonella makes us sick. It hospitalizes some of us. It kills some of us. Some survivors have lifelong health complications. So why can Purdue and Tyson and all the rest sell chicken contaminated with salmonella? Why is the burden placed on the consumer to make sure the food is safe? You probably already know the answer because industry lobbies to keep it that way. They don't want to spend the extra money to ensure their products are free from salmonella. They want the consumer to be responsible because it is cheaper for them. That's it. What can we do about it? According to the filmmakers, we can urge our legislators to push for more strenuous regulations and stop eating cantaloupe. Again, food producers cannot sell food in the United States contaminated with E. coli. This has most certainly reduced rates of infection. But the filmmakers make it seem as though this is a success story. In fact, one of the interviewees says that exactly, that it is a success story. They interview Ryan Ronholm. He's the director of food policy for Consumer Reports. And he says, the rates that you see today are very minimal and you rarely see an E. coli outbreak involving ground beef. 2022, seven illnesses and six hospitalizations linked to ground beef. 2019, 209 illnesses and 29 hospitalizations linked to ground beef. 2019, again, 33 reported cases and 18 hospitalizations. This one linked to ground bison. 2018, 18 reported cases, six hospitalizations, and one death. And that doesn't include all of the outbreaks that don't have a known food source. That food source could be beef as well. It also doesn't include the leafy greens, the sprouts, basically every other food outbreak that, as the film tells us, is really caused by beef, chicken, etc. How we raise these animals can fuel the growth of these bugs. So if we crowd the animals together and you have one that's carrying a really bad pathogen like E. coli 0157, then they can poop those bacteria out. And then the shit from the cattle washes off into the streams or into canals, irrigation canals, and then those can be used to water these plants. My point is that even if we had similar legislation for salmonella, even if it were illegal to sell products contaminated with it, as long as we keep farming animals, particularly in the way that we do, we will continue to see outbreaks. Speaking of leafy greens and other produce, the film focuses on them a lot, telling us not to purchase bagged salad, only whole heads that we can wash ourselves, no sprouts, don't buy cantaloupe because you can't properly clean the outside, the rind, and then you're cutting with your knife down through the fruit and bringing whatever was on the rind onto the part you're going to eat. But according to the CDC, many salmonella outbreaks involve meat products. Ground beef in 2023, fish in 2022, salami sticks, seafood, Italian style meats, shrimp, breaded stuffed chicken, and ground turkey in 2021, ground beef, raw tuna, and ground turkey again in 2019. So if you're not going to eat cantaloupe and romaine, I don't know, man, maybe cut out the ground beef too. 
The animal agriculture industry is not the only one responsible for salmonella infections. Several people are infected every year by small operations, very small operations, backyard chickens and ducks. This year alone has seen 690 infections and 141 hospitalizations in the U.S., including Puerto Rico. Last year saw 1,230 illnesses, 225 hospitalizations, and two deaths. Lots of infections from reptile pets, too, which makes sense. These animals carry salmonella, and backyard hen owners are probably a lot more hands-on than your typical farmer. I'm sure many of them are not wearing gloves. They're maybe even hugging and smooching the little cuties. There is inherent risk when we share our homes, our lives, when we live so closely to other species, including cats and dogs. Cat scratch fever it's not only a terrible Ted Nugent song, it's a real thing that I had as a child. <laughs> my mom said my lymph node was so swollen my armpit right here that the doctors were like if this doesn't go down we're gonna we're gonna have to operate what luckily it did go down i still have my lymph node <laughs> Whether we farm animals or have them as pets, we put ourselves at some amount of risk. With farming, it's a lot of risk. We still don't know the origin of COVID-19, but there is a very good chance it originated with animals in the Wuhan market. Many experts warn that animal agriculture is just a ticking time bomb. We cannot do this and not pay the price for it. The more exposure people like agricultural workers have to animals in unsanitary conditions like farming and rendering, the greater the chance of a new patient zero for an outbreak of a much more severe virus that spreads through the population. Yes, even people who never got anywhere near a farm or a slaughterhouse. This is a very serious problem and one we are very ill-equipped to do anything about. There is a very, very good chance that we will experience a pandemic linked to factory farming. The question is when. So overall, Poisoned is decent for what it is. One of these nutrition, health, fear-mongery sort of documentaries. For the most part, it is correct information. We should be concerned about salmonella. It is bad and producers should be responsible for keeping it out of food, which might actually happen. We'll see. But salmonella is not the only pathogen. Regulating it without reducing our contact with animals and animal products does not solve the problem. If we really care about pathogen exposure, we need to significantly reduce the number of animals we farm. So am I going to stop eating romaine and cantaloupe? No. The truth is, the risk of infection is very, 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 very small. And the vast majority do not die. The vast majority don't even go to the hospital. So no, I personally am not worried about eating romaine or cantaloupe. Or bagged lettuce, honestly. I'm far more concerned about future outbreaks, COVID-level pandemics, or worse. COVID has killed more than a million people in this country alone. And yeah, it is inherently unfair for those of us who don't participate in animal agriculture. We try to as little as possible by not purchasing these foods or buying leather or any of that. And yet we still potentially suffer for it. That sucks. I don't eat sprouts, though, not because I'm scared, because they're disgusting. What is the point of those? They're nasty looking, and they're expensive, and they have, like, no taste or just, like, a kind of bitter. I mean, it depends on the sprout, right? But the ones I've had, alfalfa, broccoli, and what's the, like, thicker one that kind of looks like worms? Oh, God. No. Thank you for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. I would love to know your thoughts. I would love to know if you saw this, what you thought about Poisoned. Um, be warned. I was sobbing, okay? there, There's the E. coli part. They talk about a case of one of the children, little baby, who died, and they have the father, and they're interviewing him, and it is just, it's it's as terrible as it sounds. It's terrible. Just be warned if you are sensitive to little babies being hurt, then, you know, it's, uh, yeah. Anyway, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to be notified when I upload. Thank you so much to all of my patrons, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. I do post two exclusive videos there a month for $5 plus patrons. I'm about to record the first one actually for August. And then the second one of the month is a controversial topic that's unrelated to veganism. Pretty sweet. Thanks again, guys. New video soon.